Good morning, folks. Linked for you will be the Lockheed Martin Solar and Astrophysics Lab. They handled the processing and allowed us our first looks yesterday at IRIS. You can check the individual frames you want to see and then select the video below. Now, in many ways, these are not exactly what we wanted. They are unprocessed, raw, and the slit jaw quick look often has a dual camera unbuffed between the compiled images. The level 1 and level 2 data will be available later this month. They have seven pages and dozens and dozens of observations if you want to investigate. Let's kick it to ISON. The Mars Observing Fleet is sending back their images of the tiny comet as it passes Mars. Each one of these images is about eight miles across, and if you're shocked at how small the comet is, then you have not gone outside and done your homework. Some great images on spaceweather.com photo gallery, and a prediction on their homepage about a disintegration possibility. Now that would ruin many of your hopes for a visual splendor. But it's what we've been concerned about more than anything else. The majority of ISON discussion on my website is about the size and debris related. Major hoax alert, folks. This was sent to me yesterday and I've got to jump out ahead of it. Remember the 13th.com. Right, first of all, .com does not give me a lot of confidence that this is really from NASA, but also talks in third-person neutral describing how NASA discovered something that will shake us to the core and they'll release it to the media November 13th. They want you to sign up with your email, follow them on Facebook, etc. I see no reason to think this is valid. For now, I'm calling it out on my BS detector, but if you have evidence to the contrary, please submit it. Coming to Europe where a deliberate oil spill is endangering hundreds of ducks and other lake life. Meanwhile, this is not an algae bloom, someone stole radioactive lightning rods from a work site. That same buoy north of Australia keeps showing minor deviations. Each jolt is inches only. They have persisted more than a day and the general wake is now more variable. Jerry and the new Storm 93 each headed out away from the Americas. However, there is now no disagreement on the models for 97. Here she comes. Had a gamma burst yesterday, right after the news, make that two on the day, one north, one south. Solar flaring still in a low range, sunspots are growing in size but not necessarily complexing. Magnetics unmixed and will need some more time for the incomers. Solar wind shows the CME and coronal hole stream are both waning now. KP index and D jump back up again, but hopefully we're done now. Those who caught the evening news know that the SDO is performing a maneuver, a little flip to cool one side of the satellite. But during the flip, there was an Earth-directed eruption. You can see the evidence of it afterwards. Now if we take out the flip, you can see the before and after with the jump in the timestamp. So let's go to the GOES SXI, which didn't flip yesterday. Yes indeed, there's the eruption. This should mostly miss Earth behind our orbital pathway, but it's very easy to see a glancing blow on our way. Updates to come. We are between coronal holes at the moment. You can really see the next one about to come in there. Very dark. So far the power is just moderate at best. Now the thousand quakes in a few days up in Iceland has settled in favor of some larger ones. We now have two rumbles mirroring the largest we saw during the uptick or more. I'll leave you with quakes around the globe and shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.